Hey, this is Noxer, and this is the Tier 8 Japanese cruiser Atago. It has 10 main guns, 8 secondary guns, 36 AA guns, 16 torpedoes, a top speed of 35.6 knots, total health 40,100, modules used, reduce crit chance on main battery, increase AA range, reduce flood and fire chance, faster rudder shift for my commander, situation awareness, basic survivability, basic firing training, faster turret traverse, lower chance of fire, Lower cooldown on damage control, and advanced firing training. We're on the map fault line. I spawned in on the east side and I headed east. Now, usually you run into a couple enemies that want to push up the 8, 9, 10 line. Sometimes they go on the western half of the islands, sometimes they go on the east. But overall, they want to put pressure on you and friendly carriers. And generally, what I like to do is I like to identify where my ally carriers are and I like to protect those lanes so there's an ally carrier that spawned on the east side of the map he's headed towards the center but looks like a lot of enemies are headed this way at least three ships could be more could be an enemy destroyer I have no idea all I know is there's two enemy cruisers and a battleship so the best way to do this is to sail defensively. Unfortunately, my damage control is down and they knocked out steering. And I'm steering just slightly to the right. So I'm conveniently avoiding this island that is on my west side now. But this Otago is sailing straight at me. I only have access to my back two guns. I'm gonna use them as best as I can. And I'm not moving at 100%. He's using AP. Very difficult shot for AP. I switch to AP as he goes broad, hoping to get a good penetration. We lead him, of course, at the waterline. He misses all his shots, thankfully. We are now not detected anymore. Appears the Otago was the target that was detecting us. There's an island in the way. Neither of us can see each other. And finally, Damage control is back up. Yeah, I use it immediately to fix steering because I don't want to go without steering. And we're going to adjust our heading. Try and engage enemy target. And he pops out, of course. He shows almost the perfect shot. If he would have angled a little bit more, it would have been a perfect shot. Unfortunately, he doesn't. If he maintains this kind of angling, I should switch to HE. So we try again. And yeah, very mediocre. Very mediocre. We've basically wasted probably 10k damage trying to use this AP, and it's just not working out. We try a blind shot on the Cleveland after it disappears. Our rounds are going to be less accurate. Of course. With the island in the way, the Otago shows the broadside has no problem. Probably going to run into the island, but I missed my opportunity to attack this guy. So, the Otago is a very fun ship, much better than the Kitakami. Fits the Japanese cruiser line much better. It's a great example for those who don't have high tier Japanese cruisers, how they play. Unlike Unlike the Atlanta, which is basically just a larger destroyer, it doesn't represent the U.S. cruiser line very well at all. But it is an interesting ship. I recently purchased it, and there'll probably be a video of it in the next few days. So you should look forward to that. Now, we're looking at pretty much the worst thing we could possibly see. Two Clevelands, an Otago, and a Nagato. It's, it's not ideal. We would love it if we could just move away and not take any damage from them at all. They are broadside, so if we do get a good, accurate shot, we should be able to penetrate. We're just trying to get this Cleveland. He seems to be okay with showing his side to me. And we are definitely moving out of his range. We do okay AP damage, about... 1.1k damage per round. The Cleveland's out of our line of sight. We've got this enemy Nagato, so we switch to AG. 
HE, much better choice for battleships and probably long range engagements because the enemy has a lot more time to maneuver. It's a lot easier for them to adjust their heading based on your shots. And this Nagato looks like he's going to land a pretty good shot on me. If he led me. Oh, of course. It's going to be one of those games, right? Steering gets knocked out again. Have to use damage control. We're landing some pretty great shots. We've got excellent guns. The Otago is really just every other Japanese cruiser at this tier. It's, it's fantastic. I can't say enough about how awesome the ship is when you compare it to what they had in closed beta. The Kitakami was a one-trick wonder. Either you got amazing torpedo... <sighs> Steering is off again. We cannot maneuver at all and we have to wait for 45 seconds. So we're just gonna head in this direction and we're gonna try and land as many shots as we can on the Otago since he's decided to sail right next to us, the enemy carrier has spotted my two friendly carriers and he's interested in nothing more than to make their life miserable. <laughs> so it's unfortunate for them, but I can't really do anything except sail in the straight direction and I'm quickly moving in on the four enemy ships near the EF line. Need to be very careful. At this point, I was not fully aware of how close danger was until I swapped over. And just in the nick of time, we get our damage control back up. And we swap to AP because this enemy Cleveland is really close. He's firing a ton on us. And we would love it to use this island to hide because there's far too many enemies out in the open that can take us down. Okay, so we got the island in the way. We're still spotted. So I would imagine that there's an enemy somewhere close by. We have access to torpedoes. But it doesn't seem like he's interested in continuing on that path. That's fine. It's really not a good game. We are three ships down. And I'm in the middle of nowhere. And I'm just curious where this Cleveland's going to decide to go. And every time I see that indicator, I'm like, Cleveland? Cleveland? No. No, it's that battleship. And this Mogami is pretty low health. He looks like he's going to show his side. It was an Atlanta, sorry. Atlanta. And the Atlanta is also showing his side. We're going to try and take out the Atlanta. Ooh, the enemy battleship lands some pretty good shots. Waterline, close range cruiser, should do a lot of damage. <sighs> Needs to be better than that. Probably led a little bit too much. You can just see the rate of fire on this Atlanta. It's extreme. Uh, of course. Steering gets knocked out again. We have to use damage control. Problem solved, sir. And of course, he sets us on fire. We're burning pretty bad. Two fires. And finally, we're reloaded. After he's fired like 40 rounds, we lead at the water line, and we don't lead enough. So it's not looking good, right? We are going to burn for a while. He's going to try and land his shots. And a friendly conveniently does damage to him. This time, it looks like we're going to have good shots. And yeah, we take him out. Good. Now, if we can just put out the fire, we can stabilize a little bit. As best as we can, right? We're only under 3,000 hit points. No. 3470 is where it stops. Okay. So we got three enemies on the east side. Looks like an ally killed the battleship in the center, so we only have to worry about what looks like two enemy ships there. We're low health, so we have no interest in taking direct fire from any enemy that might try and attack us. We're going to try and support our team by providing anti-aircraft. We pop our fighter, and we're headed for where that torpedo bomber appears to be headed, which 
to me. Looks like either the friendly cruiser or the friendly aircraft carrier. We still have two aircraft carriers. They still have two aircraft carriers. And this Cleveland is interested in showing himself finally. We've got AP loaded. And he fires right on us, I believe. Yeah, it's going for us. He doesn't lead enough. I don't lead enough either. But I do land enough damage. We're going to try and avoid his next salvo. Yep, yep, yep. Very predictable. <laughs> the enemy destroyer shows up too. The Cleveland is very scary when you're this low. Well, the Cleveland's very scary at all times, but especially being this low, I don't want to take damage from him. I want to attack him when he is not able to engage me. And we've got this enemy destroyer. We still have AP loaded, but it's kind of irrelevant. He's so low that we're going to try our best to try and take him out. And we land a shot. If we led the target just a little bit more, we would have been able to take him out. Or at least damage him. That Cleveland is just sitting behind the island. No, no, no. We pop defensive fire. We want to try and kill the enemy torpedo bomber before he gets close. Now you notice the first five, seven minutes of the game, a lot of deaths. The next three to five minutes, it's very slow because people are low health and they don't want to be aggressive. But if you got a person that hasn't taken any damage, they should probably be the leaders. So your allies can support you and kill the enemy. This full health Cleveland would be amazing if he could push forward, take some damage from the enemy while we focus fire the Cleveland and then the Farragut. But he's not interested in that. Oh no, I want to finish this game at full health. And that Cleveland's almost dead. And we just fire and... Ah, a little too slow. <laughs> Hopefully this destroyer will show himself just barely. Nope, he's turning back. Ah, hate you. But look at it. The destroyer and the two enemies on the east, that's it. There's no other ships that can assault us. We have two enemy aircraft carriers doing all of the annoying things that aircraft carriers do, but they're not putting themselves at risk at all, so most likely they're at their base. There's five minutes left in the game. My objective was to put pressure on these aircraft carriers, so I'm going to start heading towards the enemy base. I know that I'll probably see the enemy destroyer on the other side. I'll be able to assist in firing on him, but you can just see all of my teammates are playing passively too. And they really shouldn't, right? We really should be putting pressure on the enemy. We've got the advantage at this point in the game. And that destroyer, he tried his best. I'm gonna get right to the edge, man. You're not gonna be able to fire on me at all. So we try and fire on his position. Unfortunately, we miss. He lands some shots. We can't afford even destroyer shots at this point. And an enemy carrier shows up. Hmm, interesting. It's so convenient for him to move forward so much. He is a little aggressive. He wants to be able to recall his aircraft and send them out at a faster rate. Well, guess what? You are now in range of my guns, or nearly in range of my guns. So I'm going to just head forward, try and pass through the islands, kill the enemy destroyer before he can return fire and then switch to the enemy aircraft carrier. I figure how passive my allies have been playing they can take care or at least put up a fight against the two remaining enemies on this side of the map. A lot of times and I'll find myself doing this I won't play to the weaknesses of my teammate if they're playing passively I should go aggressive if they're playing aggressive, I should go passive. A lot of times I'm just 
loading up, pushing the flank, and depending on what my enemies do, dictates the success I have. Oh, thankfully those landed short. And we're going to go for this enemy. He drops off. He's not moving at all. He's probably going to start moving because he sees... And I just do a blind fire. I'm like, ah, I hate you, carrier. Uh, allies have killed one of the two enemy cruisers. And, of course, blind fire wasn't going to work. So, we aim. And we fire on this independence. Still hasn't decided to move. Interesting choice. Both of the carriers are within range of me being able to do damage to them. And... They don't want anything to do with me, of course. And my fighter is just falling off. Defensive fire, about to fall off too. And we're gonna take bomb damage. Come on, avoid this bomb. <sighs> okay, we avoided that bomb. And the independence is moving now. So we try and lead as much as we can, knowing that that's about as much as we can before the island gets in the way. We set up on fire, probably gonna have to use damage control. Another independence is sitting out in the open. And I figure he's going to continue on that path. So I send out torpedoes with the assumption that he will continue. I'm also going to fire on his position as I move towards the other enemy aircraft carrier. We set him on fire again. He didn't use damage control, so it's probably down. And we're going to try and... oh. He just did. Damage control has been used. He'll have an immunity for probably 5 to 10 seconds. But we set up on fire again. Good. The immunity fell off. If we can land one more good salvo, he can be dead. We still have a chance to win this game, guys. 1 minute 40. You hold out until the window opens for you. This should finish him off. And he's going to burn down. So, switch to the enemy. Aircraft carrier. We're going to try our best to keep up. At this point, they're pretty fast. They can go almost probably 28, 30 knots. They're not super slow like they used to be. And this this jerk is going to try and hide behind the island. I can just see it right now. He's trying everything he can to try and stop me. We set him on fire. I'm trying to maneuver for the dive bomber. And of course, it lands right on me. 400 hit points. And he's burning. What he's going to probably do is hold his damage control until he can recall. We're going to try and cause another burn. Okay, he's he's chosen to put it out. And are we going to get another shot before he gets around the island? No! But we do help kill the enemy fighter squadron. Now he has no idea where we are. Now we need to decide. Now, what I figure he'll do is the last known position. He thinks I'm headed towards one side of the island, right? And he's going to maneuver to the other. So I'm going to maneuver to one the other side of the island. And I'm going to maneuver where I can see him. That was what I was thinking. I don't believe I would have time to get around the island. Come on, we can do this. 15 seconds left. Ally uses torpedo bombers. Let's see if he can land a couple of them. He lands all of them except... Yes, all of them! Oh, just let me give a shot at this guy. He's flooding. 1,200, 900. And that is the way that game ended. Another second or two and he is dead. Either to flooding or for me firing on him. Maybe if I would have chosen to go right instead of left, I would have had maybe one chance to fire. If I would have chosen him first to attack, maybe would have killed him. Just a game I'd like to have back. Should have won. I hope you all can learn from this. I hope you all have a great day, and I'll catch you next time.